Basketball podcast, also known as MLB podcast, episode 80. I'm Evan. And I'm Ja. And this is our basketball podcast where we recap, break down, and analyze players and teams from the previous games from the previous day. How are you this Sunday, Ja? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. That's all. <laughs> yeah, it is that day. it's a Sunday. Holy Sunday. For you, it's a Sunday. For me, it's a holy Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm doing good as well, chilling on this holy Sunday. I hope everyone having a good day. I hope everyone will have a good day. It is Sunday, so last day of the weekend. Enjoy it. Enjoy it before you have to go do your business tomorrow. But as for last night, Saturday night, basketball, and a lot of things, a lot of good, a lot of bad. Let's get into the first Prime time game of the day and the only one of the day, which featured the Golden State Warriors, no Stephen Curry, up against the Memphis Grizzlies. And as you expect, two young teams going at it. Very entertaining, very fun, just like it was uh, the previous game. Less of a blowout, though, Yeah, like it was in the previous game. Uh, Andrew Wiggins did not drop 40 <laughs> in this game, but he did play well, along with uh, Jordan Poole, along with Oubre, along with, uh, I don't know how to say his first name. To, 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 uh, not the uh, first name, first last name. You talking, uh, about, the, you talking about the big man? Uh, yes. Know no, the forward. Uh, the forward, right? I, I don't know. How to, I'm never going to try. Tos, Toscano Anderson? Uh, yeah, Toscano oh, Anderson. Oh, Toscano Anderson, okay. Yes. Who you thought Juan? I was talking about? Juan? I thought you were talking about... Yes. Uh, Nico Mannion. <laughs> not, not Nico Mannion. It's some other dude. So some, some dude who got to start today, they said. Um oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um he's just Allen. <laughs> oh <laughs> um, that's his first name. Yeah. Um I, I don't know how to say his last name. Put it up screen. Smalley Gikic, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Sorry for butchering his name. But all the supporting cast for both teams played a big role in this game, and it was very entertaining. A lot of going to the paint, a lot of inside shots, um, and it was very close, very competitive to that fourth quarter, which the Grizzlies went on a seven, actually wrong, an 8-0 run to close out the game, thus beating this Warriors team. So let me get your breakdown of what happened in this game. Yeah, close competitive. Um, came down to the wire and it, it and it showed. Um, because the Warriors, even though it wasn't they weren't, they weren't down by a lot, they were down for most of this game. The Grizzlies were were showing that grit and that grind that we know for their culture to really be. But yet the Warriors being who they are and the tutelage that they're under, you know, they they will never give up. Um, they they've been through situations with these with their star players before. And it, it only takes for a team effort in order to bring them back into the game, obviously, like how it should always be with basketball. And you can see that they that they nearly did an upset until what you just alluded to, the fact that the Grizzlies just went on that 8-0 run to close out the game. And it was from all in. And great job and a great win by the Grizzlies. Yes, great win by the Wiz, great win by the Grizzlies, and everybody really played a role in this win. Uh, John Moran, Valanchunas, Dylan Brooks, uh, Kyle Anderson, Slow Mo, <laughs> uh, uh, Desmond Bain, uh, Brandon Clark. I mean, this is a great all around team victory, much like you would expect the team victory that you want. Yeah. You know, spreading the ball around, everyone getting touches, everybody playing well. You can't, you can't expect, and you can't have a better win than the, what the Grizzlies had from last night. Yeah. So, yeah. In the end, Grizzlies close out the game and beat the Warriors, sticking around in that little playing spot. They are a game behind the Warriors. The Warriors are the ninth seed, and the Grizzlies are the tenth seed. Mm. But all right, as I said, that was the only prime time game of the night. So, any other games, any player performances, anything that you would like to talk about first? 
I don't know. I like to talk about the Spurs versus the Bucks, and this was a really good, classic, competitive game from start to finish. Um, the Spurs came out with the with the strong with the stronger start, but then as it, as the game wind down, of course, the Bucks being who they are, of course, they were always going to make sure to always to prove their dominance, right? To prove their worth yeah. in, in the league, right? And as a result, it got to a point where I think. Um, in the middle, to, towards the end of the second half, going into the third quarter, they basically were able to take the lead against the Spurs. But then it was just like, you know, a, a, a back and forth from there. But as the game was closing out, the, the 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 Bucks just went to work. And as a result, they were able to take this game. But give it up. Lonnie Walker, he balled out for the Spurs. DeMar DeRozan, being who he is, the, the elite scorer that we know he could be. Well, that we know that he is, not could be. He is. Yeah. He 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 um he he balled out and the Spurs team just played as a whole team effort too but uh, but the the Bucks were just the better team this game. Yeah, a uh, quick note about DeRozan. He's become a really good passer this season for the Spurs team. Him being the best player and him attracting the most attention, you know that he's gonna have to make plays for his team and he's been able to do that for the Spurs. So I just want to um give um him credit for that. That's my guy right there. That's my guy. Okay. Uh, but for the Bucs, yeah, impressive win. Uh, the Bucs really do play great fourth quarter basketball. Yeah. Uh, the way they can close out games and go on big runs, and we've seen it in the past, uh, this, is, this is what you want from a championship contending team. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, great win by this Bucs team. Uh. <laughs> I'll give you this one. You want to talk about it? Uh, we can both talk about it. Yeah, let's go. All right. So, in the afternoon, there was an early afternoon game, 3.30. The Atlanta Hawks going up against the defending champions, Los Angeles Lakers. And let's just get to the bad part about it. Around, I believe, is the second quarter. Second quarter, yeah, the 10-minute yes, In part. that second quarter, uh, Solomon Hill tried to reach for the ball and ended up I guess landing on LeBron's ankle, rolling his ankle. LeBron went down immediately and left the game. Well, not immediately. He didn't leave the game immediately. He did go down immediately, but he yeah. didn't leave the game immediately. Yeah. He stayed in the game, tried to toughen it through, tried to toughen out. Actually made a three on one leg, uh, but it was too much. And he actually left the locker room or left to the locker room and did not return. Yeah. That's sad news for Lakers fans, sad news for anybody who loves basketball. Uh, but the good news about it is MRI, or the MRI came out, these x-rays came out negative. Yeah. But the bad part about that is he's out indefinitely. So when we don't know how long he's going to be out for, he will miss time. He will miss games. And that's not something that the Lakers don't need, considering Anthony Davis is out. And they were just hitting their stride after that bumpy patch that they hit when Anthony Davis went out. So that's not what you want to see. Yeah. Um, um, before I give my thoughts about it, I'm, I'm going to just go on. Um, and the Hawks basically had the momentum right after, right that, after that. Right after that point. And even though the Lakers stood afloat, give credit to the other guys, Stroder, um, Tucker, Kuzma, all of those guys, the Hawks just – was able to take have the advantage at that point. And as a result, they take the win 99 to 94. But as unfortunate as this is for the Lakers, you know, with this injury, especially to two of their marquee players, I feel like this this is basically like a kind of test for them to to mm-hmm. see how could the team come together. Well, they, they like regardless, they're still gonna have Braun and AV on the sideline. Like, you know what I mean? And that chemistry will always be there. But with them not being on the court during playing time, how would how are they going to push through? Are they going to be able to come together, come up? Is Frank Vogel going to get different strategies in place or whatsoever in order to see how could this team do going down this second half of the season stretch? Yeah, it's going to be a real test for them, uh, as you said. Because, uh, you know, they rely on LeBron a lot. Yeah, we're not just scoring wise, but just making plays for his team. Exactly, he's he's their best passer they have. He's their best playmaker. 
So not only are you taking away the scoring, taking away passing, taking away the setting up, taking away the plays. Exactly. So that's going to be the real test for this Lakers team. Um, but give them give them credit. Uh, even though the Hawks had that run in that third quarter, they fought back in that fourth quarter. Yeah, trying to get back to the game. A uh, Harold and uh, Kuzma and um, uh, Schroeder, sorry, <laughs> and Schroeder. They really let them back into this game. But like you said, the Hawks just was just too much for them. Yeah, and. They close out the win. Uh, yeah, LeBron, high ankle sprain, uh, out indefinitely. We'll keep you updated on when he'll be returning and how long he'll be out. Also, quick note about the Hawks. With the win, marks their eighth win in a row. So congratulations to them and Amy McMillan as I'm playing great basketball. All right. Uh, quick note about the two other games. Uh, the Kings and 76ers. 76ers had no Ben Simmons. Obviously, mm-hmm. alongside no Embiid, who we know is still out, but that was no problem for them. Maybe they took care of business like that against the Kings, because the Kings are still the Kings. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and the Hornets and the Clippers, the Clippers really just really yeah. took it to the yeah really took it to the Hornets. A uh, balance scoring everybody from the starters to the bench. Uh, and it was able to blow up this Hornets team. Yeah. All right. Uh, the only news was LeBron's ankle injury. So that being said, it is prediction time for tonight's set of games. A good little lineup, including a few afternoon games, which is right for the reason for the early upload. So let's get into it first. Starting off the first afternoon game, one o'clock. The Pacers up against the Heat. We got, we got the Pacers again. We got the seats for the season sweep. Well, not season sweep, the two game sweep. Mm. I got the heat, though. I got the heat. The next game of the afternoon, two o'clock. The Thunder against the Rockets. I got the Rockets. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they're gonna have to win. You know what? I'm just going to put my luck into them. They're going to have to win at some point. Yes, you are right. Whether that be this season or next season. I got the Thunder. (laughs) The Pelicans or the Nuggets? (laughs) The Nuggets. The Nuggets. The Magic or the Celtics? Oh, Magic. Magic as well. So it's kind of been playing the best basketball. And that closes the afternoon game schedule. Let's fast forward to the night. Seven o'clock, the first primetime game of the day, NBA TV. The Washington Wizards going up against the Brooklyn Nets. You got it. I got the Nets. Nets as well. The Raptors against the Cavs. Um, Raptors. <laughs> Raptors. <laughs> Even though they are on a Losing streak as well. Seven games. The Bulls against the Pistons. Um, Bulls. Bulls. It's not 90. Uh, 76 is against the Knicks. <laughs> um, um, the Knicks. The Knicks also. The next primetime game and last doubleheader. Actually, no, it's not doubleheader. It's just the second game. <laughs> NBA TV, 10 o'clock. The Los Angeles Lakers, no LeBron, up against the Phoenix Suns. 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 And lastly, the rematch from a few nights ago, the Dallas Mavericks up against the Portland Trailblazers. Um, Mavericks. Mavericks. Yeah, Mavericks. <laughs> All right. I think it's time to wrap things up. Any final thoughts? Um. Um. Wait, um, is Blake Griffin probable for next game? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Blake Griffin is scheduled, I believe, to make his debut against the Washington Wizards at 7 o'clock on NBA TV, which is the game that we'll be covering. Yeah. So if he is indeed going to play, we'll keep you updated on how well he does in his first game in a Brooklyn Nets uniform. Yay, Blake, Kyrie, and KD. Katie's not playing. Stop being a hater. 
when he comes back. The man you're excluding is an MVP candidate. Oh, my bad. Somebody called the beard. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Sorry. Yeah. The way you hate him, you would have thought you played for Houston too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate, bro. Well, you just, yay, yay. And you're not even mentioning his name. I thought I don't I, I I don't think I needed to mention his name. You already know that he played for the team. But you need to mention everyone else. <laughs> hey, I did. This is I what I mean. You, lo- you love to do this. This is what I, I mean. Did, I didn't mention DeAndre this. Jordan. He plays for the team. DeAndre Jordan is, with all respect, he's not a bigger factor than James Harden. Well, obviously, but MVP candidate James Harden, by the way, who I believe deserves more credit. For MVP status, the season that he's having, what he's doing for the Brooklyn Nets should not go unnoticed. Yeah, I, I, I'll give you respect on that one. Yeah, he does deserve MVP status right now. He does. He does. I'm not, especially after the fact that I think two of the games in which um I think both Kyrie and KD weren't playing, he basically led against the, the Suns. Uh, yep, against the Suns and against the Pacers, I believe he led them to win both of those games off of a comeback. So. I, I, give, I give respect to that. I give, I, I give him status for that. But outside of that, I will never mention his name again. Never mention his name again. Okay, I'll, I'll not mention his name ever again. But yes, yeah, so man, listen, you have no, you're not a Houston Rockets fan. <laughs> Stop. You have no quarrel to dislike James Harden. That's it. That's done. Leave it there. There's nothing to be said about, there's nothing negative to be said about Harden right now. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Stop being a hater. I'm not being people, a hater. Worse than people on Bleach Report. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being a hater. I'm just chilling. They always say. <sighs> oh, with that being said, thank you guys for watching today's pod. Make sure you tune into tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Also, follow IG down in the description below. And once again, I am Evan. And I'm Ja. And this was the Mind of Basketball Podcast.